Hey everybody, Joe Baker here with the Edit Bay. Today we're going to take a look at export settings and project settings. It's a little odd that with a name called the Edit Bay, I haven't had a tutorial like this yet, but this is a request on my channel, so I'm going to go ahead and tackle this one today. When it comes to project settings and export settings, a lot of that depends on the type of footage that you're using. So I have here some different types of footage right here. I've got some 4K footage from a yeah, GH4, and I've got some drone footage shot at a completely different frame rate and different resolution. Now, most NLEs will allow you to mix and match footage resolutions, um, frame rates, and that kind of thing. Um, so when it comes to deciding the project settings and your export settings, there's a couple of things to consider. Here's the first thing to consider. When you're setting up your project settings, you're going to want to go with the, the settings that match the majority of your footage. So let's say that 80% of your footage is 4K Phantom 3 footage, and you've got to you've mix and match that a little bit with 1080p footage. You're more than likely going to want to set up your, your project settings on the, on the 4K footage. So for example, this is my highest res footage. I'm going to go ahead and right click this and create a new sequence based on this clip. So let me go ahead and delete that for the sake of the tutorial. Um, these two do not conform. So now if I come up here to my sequence settings, let's take a look at what we've got. So this is 4K footage, 3840 by 2160, and we're at 24 frames per second. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK right now. Again, this is a 4K timeline at this point. If I drop out this next clip, it looks, it looks really small because this is 1080p footage. If you mix and match like this, you have two options. I can change the sequence settings to match the 1080p, or I can scale up the 1080p to match the 4K settings. So what should I do? That's when you have to take your export settings into consideration. What is your delivery method going to be? So if I'm just going to be uploading to YouTube, YouTube will accept pretty much any codec, any format. They're pretty flexible, so I can kind of do whatever I want. Now, one of the advantages to um, shooting 4K footage on a 1080p timeline is we have the ability to crop the image without losing resolution. Uh, we can do pans and scans on video footage. There's a lot of, a lot of advantages to doing it that way. Um, I tend to take my 4K footage, cut it in a 1080p timeline, and export to 1080p. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that right now. You're just going to go up to your sequence settings and just change this by hand to 1920 by 1080. Frame rate's going to match. I'm going to click OK. Now, this shot right here matches resolution wise. Mind you, there's still a, uh, a difference in frame rate. This is actually ten, uh, excuse me, 60 frames per second, and the project is set up to be 24 frames per second. So you have some options here. This will go ahead and conform if you leave everything as is. But you can also tell Premiere to interpret the 60 frames per second footage as 24 frames per second. And the effect of that will then give you slower, smoother playback. Just kind of depends on what you're going for. Let me show you how to do that, by the way. Just go ahead and right click on your footage. Go to Modify, Interpret Footage. And we're just going to go ahead and click on Assume This Frame Rate. Then we can type in 23.976 and click OK. And the result then will be this playing back much slower and smoother. As of right now, most consumer cameras are using the H.264 compression scheme. That's the codec that's being used. So when it comes to exporting your footage, doing your final render, it's gonna you'll have the smoothest results if you go with something similar to what you started with. So let's go ahead and export this sequence really quick. I'm gonna go to File, Export, Media. By default, it'll match the source. And what that's saying is it's taking a look at the footage and your, your project settings and saying, okay, most of what you got right here, you're working in a um, H.264 timeline. I'll match it at a high bit rate, and it's going to come out looking pretty much the way it looked in your project. So this is a pretty good you know, starting point for you to have. You just want to make sure that your, your, your frame rates match and your resolution matches. Now you can go into a couple of extra details right here to increase the resolution. You can render at maximum bit depth. This will come in handy if you've done some pretty heavy color grading on your footage. I usually uh, check the use maximum render quality. You can also set this at two passes, okay, which will also give you a boost in bit rate, which will result in higher quality video. Then we just go ahead and click export. So this is what I'll typically do with Phantom 3 Pro footage. And I know the question that I was asked was specifically in regard to that particular camera. But 
unfortunately, there really is no easy answer to what are the best project settings and what are the best export settings. And I know it sounds like a cop out, but the truth of the matter is it really depends on the type of camera you're using, what type of footage you're working with, and what your deliverables are going to be. Uh, what are the delivery standards? What is the client asking for? Or is it a personal project you're simply uploading to the web? And then the question becomes, what website? YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, what type of codecs do they accept? What kind of formats do they accept? Um, and because if you're going the online route, most websites, especially YouTube, will accept such a wide array of codecs and such a wide array of containers that you can do pretty much whatever you want. And if that's the case, you might as well have it match your footage. So again, just to reiterate, we'll go over here to File, Export, Media. By default, it's gonna match your project setting. And if you set your project up by right-clicking on the clip and selecting new sequence from clip, everything should match across the board, which should give you the ideal export settings. All right, folks, that about wraps it up. My name is Joe Baker with the Edit Bay. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the box below. I'll see you next time.